God's grace, mercy, and peace to you from Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Well, the basis for our meditation this uh, New Year's Eve is the Numbers text from the Old Testament, chapter 6, verses 24 to 27, where we heard the words Joyce read just a little while ago. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Let's pray. Heavenly Fathers, we just saying we thank you for being with us throughout 2016. And Lord, as we begin 2017, may these words that uh, we've just heard read resound in our ears and in our hearts and our lives throughout the year as we know that your blessing rests upon us, your children who bear your name. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, as you were gathering here before the service started, I already greeted many of you, but I want to say it again. Happy New Year as we begin. Well, thank you. As we begin 2017 and as 2016 goes out. Uh, this, this Old Testament lesson really grabbed my attention uh, this, this evening. Uh, it, we hear these words from the Old Testament after every single service that we observe here at Mount Olive Lutheran Church. And so no doubt they're very familiar. And sometimes familiar words just become something that really don't sink in. So my prayer is that we don't just hear them, but they resound over and over and over again in the coming year. Well, like many of you here, when I was uh, growing up, a very, very small child, I knew that when I heard those words spoken by the pastor on Sunday morning, that uh, we could go home. The service was over. We picked our, up our stuff in, the, in the, uh, the pew that our family sat in with myself and two brothers, a sister, and oftentimes two foster children. So we pretty much took up a whole pew. So we had a lot of stuff to pick up. And as we were doing that and got it all picked up, we'd be ushered out and we went on home until next Sunday when I heard the words all over again. I don't know when those words started sinking in to really mean something deeper for me other than church is over. I guess we can go home now. Well, today, this evening... They mark not the end, but the beginning. Our new year starts out with words that are typically, typically spoken when everything in church is all over. And as I think about and invite you to ponder with me this Old Testament reading, as we begin 2017, they should and they're intended to give us assurance and certainty that comes not from just the pastor saying these words at the end of a service, but from God himself. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Oftentimes, uh, when I'm with a family and a loved one is passing away, as, as Shorty did the night before, I was at Shorty's bed, Vernon. I like to say those words because they're not just magic words, they're true words. And I always like to include something in case there's any doubt in a Christian's mind. The Lord look upon you with favor and then I always add, and he does, and give you peace. Because he does, because we bear his name. These are not just some human words made up thinking that they'll make people feel good. They're not a name-it-and-claim-it prosperity type of mantra to get a person thinking positive thoughts about themselves and the future. These are amazing words. They're very specific words that God himself declared and actually commanded to be spoken to his people. This Old Testament lesson, as Moses was instructed to tell this to Aaron, and his sons, say these words to my children. Well, this God who doesn't change, and, and he hasn't changed since thousands and thousands of years ago, he still wants these words to be spoken to you and me, his people. Not just when church is over, but as a new year begins. 
Well, as we look upon our 2016 coming to a close in I don't know how many more hours it is, what time is it? Is it about 6.51? So we got five hours or so left to go. Regardless of how 2016 turned out for you, maybe it was a great year, maybe it was a painful year, and as you look into 2017, maybe you have some expectations for that. But regardless of how you feel about the past year or the year that it's about to unfold before you, I want to encourage each and every one of us this evening to not resist the Holy Spirit, but allow these words. Allow them as we nurture and water plants that need the moisture and the sunlight. Let this moisture of God's word touch any part of your soul that's dry. Let the light of God's word illuminate parts that are withered in your life as 2017 opens up. And let them sink deeply within your heart, sparking hope and deep, personal, transformational blessings which surpass anything we could ever imagine as 2017 unfolds before us. This threefold blessing of God is meant specifically for those upon whom God's name has been placed. Both the Old Testament lesson and our gospel lesson speak very specifically about this name. And it's not your name, obviously. It's not my name, obviously. But it's God's name. The name given by the angel to Mary. And did you note, as I read this little short text, this little short gospel reading, that this name was given to Mary before Jesus was conceived in her womb. God knew what was about to happen. In fact, he knew thousands and thousands and thousands of years before this wonderful event. Well, our epistle lesson for this evening tells us how this name is placed upon you and me. Verse 27 in Galatians 3 says, For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. In Christ Jesus, we are sons and daughters of God through faith and heirs of God's great blessing as we hear him speak directly to us, his children who bear his name. Well, I belabor that point because I don't want there to be any doubt upon us like, well, maybe that blessing is for somebody else, somebody who's lived a better life than me, somebody who's whatever. No. You as God's child, you as one who bear his name, receive this blessing from God. I'd like to read that as if it was, because it is God speaking. As he speaks directly to you, his child, hear this. I, the Lord your God, will bless you and will keep you. I am making my face shine upon you, and I am being gracious to you. I am lifting my countenance upon you, and I am giving you peace. So we let that sink in. It's almost a pity to add anything to that because what can you add to that? We might ask, well, what does this mean? Well, it means an awful lot. I, mean, I don't know that we have time to unpack all that here this evening. But for one thing, it is three different ways of saying that God is for us. Through Jesus, his son, he looks at us with favor. So I look at that uh, that word, sometimes uh, it's translated with favor in our text for this evening. It says, I'm lifting my countenance upon you. It's not a word we often use in our everyday vernacular. But it means this. If we could see God's face, if we could see the expression on God's face as he looks at each and every one of us, it's a face of approval. It's a face that radiates love. It's a face that is clearly compassionate and caring. It's not the face of a great poker player that leaves us wondering, what's in his hand? Is this a bluff? 
God is completely transparent and honest with us as we receive the gift of his Son, Jesus Christ, through faith. We can and do know with certainty that in Christ Jesus, we can live our lives as 2016 ends and 2017 begins, entering this new year knowing, without a doubt, that regardless of what happens, whether, whatever struggles we face, whatever unexpected pain that we might go through, that God will cause all things, regardless of what they are, that will happen to us to work together for good. That's his promise, not mine. Romans 8, 28. We can know, going into 2017, he will bless us. He will make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. He will continue to look at us with favor through his son, Jesus Christ, and give us peace. Well, it's a new year soon. Let's begin this new year with an attitude that, as maybe you do automatically, but I always like to do this as 2017 unfolds. Maybe you'll stay up till midnight and watch it come in, or maybe you just wake up in the morning and go, it's a new year. Well, let's, let's begin this new year with an attitude of a new beginning, not only as individuals, but as a congregation, with new hope, with new certainty, not just for us, but for the congregation and our community and our nation and our world. And this hope and certainty is just not based on speculative thinking, but upon God's promises. The scripture says God's promises are yes and amen through Jesus Christ. And so this evening we're reminded of this in a remarkable way as we hear this text. But I know those of you that uh, were in this area, and if, even if you weren't, you probably heard about it, we were reminded of this a week ago here in Norfolk on Christmas Day. Did you see it? A rainbow. A most unusual sight on a December day in northeastern Nebraska. I don't know if this has ever happened before, but regardless, it's a sight as I looked out my window and my wife said, everybody, get out of the chairs, look out the back window. And we saw this incredible rainbow. But as we saw it, I'm reminded that God saw it too. He then remembered as he saw this rainbow, not just a beautiful sight, but a covenant that he made with Noah long ago. A covenant, not just for Noah, but for all generations to come until he returns to this earth. Genesis 9.13 says, I have set my rainbow in the clouds, and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. How appropriate and how marvelous this was for us to see on Christmas Day. I think it was just about 5 o'clock, just a little bit before 5. A brilliant, full rainbow that touched the earth and illuminated the ground beneath. It actually glowed from where we were watching it. As if God himself was allowing his face to literally shine upon us on the birthday celebration of his son. How marvelous is that? You see, this son whose birth we celebrate, who died for your sins and mine to give us his name, this is the greatest covenant of all. God has given us his one and only son, Jesus, to wash away our sins, to clothe us in his brilliant righteousness, and then, then to look upon us with favor, with blessings, and with peace. Well, this promise is certainly true for us as individuals, but it takes place in community. You see, when, when uh, Moses was instructed to tell Aaron to bless the people, it was a congregation. It was a group of people. And so in our culture, a lot of times we, we are kind of individualistic. And there's nothing wrong with blessings for us as individuals, but God blesses us as part of a community, part of the body of Christ. 
We are each members of the body of Christ, as you know. Hands, feet, ears, elbows, and all the rest. And as we receive this blessing, God can certainly bless and keep us completely on his own. He doesn't need any help from us. But it's an amazing gift of his grace as he uses you and me as extensions of his hands and his feet to bless and keep others. I know as I visit with many members here at Mount Olive, many of you are doing this already. And I want to commend you for doing this in 2016. And as you no doubt will continue that in 2017. But as we step up the plate as a congregation in need of a treasurer, in need of a vice chairman, in need of other workers here, I want to invite other members of this congregation. There's always more room for more to step up for God to use you too. Not just here at Mount Olive, but in our community in a host of different ways. So as we begin 2017, my question is, will you allow him to use you to shine his face through you to be gracious to other people? Will you let his favor and peace flow through you to others in need? I know a lot of you are doing that already. Keep up the good work. For all of us, though, let's begin this new year with a Holy Spirit-led commitment to not only receive God's blessings for ourselves, but to pass them on to others. So as we hear those words at the end of every service, the Lord bless you and keep you, know that God is sending you out to bless and keep others in our community. Not just locally, but globally. I think it's appropriate as we end this year and begin a new year, to pray for Christians around the world that face unimaginable hardship and persecution. Invite us to pray for Christians who struggle to survive in the very birthplace of Christianity in the Middle East, which in many ways lies in ruins as 2017 begins. You see, this blessing is not just for us, the United States of America, Norfolk, Nebraska, but for Christians globally. The Lord bless and keep all of us. The Lord make his face shine upon all of us as he's gracious to us. The Lord lift up his countenance upon all of us and give us his peace. May God guide us as 2017 begins to not only pray for Christians around the world, but also to act as he leads. Amen.